What's going on fellow RPG makers? Today I'm going to go over a rather simple tutorial and a short tutorial that's going to give you a basic rundown of the underappreciated common events. So RPG Maker VX Ace has a powerful built-in event system as we already know. However the common event interface allows for that system to be used at will and on command no matter where you are in your game world. Common events stay loaded into memory. So let's say you have a quest system in your game and every time you complete a quest, a message appears stating that you have completed the quest and a nice little tune is going to play. So using events alone is fine. You know, talk to your NPC, make sure the conditions are met, you get the message, the tune plays, you get your award. Fantastic. So, let's branch it out though. Say your game has a hundred plus quests. Now do you really want to constantly type out that message, constantly find the tune that you want to play, and do it every single time for every individual turn in? Probably not. And if you do, more power to you. But let me show you how you can accomplish that same small, simple, yet tedious task by just using the common events. So you've turned in your quest. You've met the condition. The NPC will tell you normally it will check to see that your condition has been met and then it will say you have completed the quest plays a sound effect gives you a reward so here's how we can accomplish the same thing in a common event form you go into your database you're gonna go to your common events tab you're gonna go you're gonna see it's slightly different than what you might be normally used to seeing when working with events you have your titles on the side of all the common events of course you can change the maximum um, you have the name of your common event, so let's say we'll make this one quest turn in effect. Okay, we have the trigger. Trigger is a little, it's the same exact process as when you have a normal event, There's, except there's a none, which basically means that it can be called at any time. Um, you have an auto run trigger, which is the performs the exact same way as a normal event that you have set to auto run and you have a parallel process trigger which is the same thing as a normal event that runs in parallel process now the difference comes with the condition switch as you can see when I switched my trigger to none condition switch grayed out that means that this common event will run as long as it's called if I have it set to auto run the condition switch lights up this allows you just like it would in a normal event to select what switch you know is on in order for this common event to run you don't have control over whether the switch is on or off at least from this segment section so if we want this effect to run only when switch number 46 is turned on we would click OK and we would make it say a parallel process so now this common event even though it's loaded into memory will only activate provided switch number 46 is turned on but we're not worried about that right now because you just want a simple quest to turn in effect so we switch this to none now for your quest turn in it works the exact same way as a normal event processing we're going to show some text saying you have completed the quest Okay and we're gonna play a particular sound effect uh, let's do an applause Okay. now say you have like every single quest that your character turns in um, will get a different reward that's fine you don't want to put that in this section because you can put that towards in the event section so we click apply and we click OK and now our common event is created so say our NPC from this is this NPC this NPC we've turned in the quest the condition has been met she says whatever she says now we call our common event so we go to insert and we go to call common event and then we see a list here's our common event that we just created the quest turn in effect so we click OK and that's it now you can attach this one line to all of your NPCs that you 
that are turning NPCs or signs or whatever, what, 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 what have you. And it will execute that quest turn in effect for you. And then, of course, you can add in your rewards and stuff right below it. But you don't have to type in the show text. You don't have to type in the sound effect. You don't have to do that every single time. All you have to worry about is the rewards. So that's a simple usage of common events. Um, now you can do some pretty neat things with common events. It's not all limited to quests. It has the full power and the full potential of the event system in RPG Maker. I happen to create a spell with common events. It's a teleport spell. Basically, what it does is, I'll show it to you right here, it's a teleport spell. It stores the actor's map variable and Y and their direction and basically based on the direction that they're facing it will move them a certain amount of tiles into the direction they're facing and an added little feature that I put into it is that it ignores tile passability settings so if I want to cross over let's say I want to cross over this lake right here and normally well water is not usually passable but with that teleport spell my character will activate the slipstream teleport go in the direction ignoring totally total passability um, rules and then reappear in the direction where they were so it's quite a long event but can you imagine if I had to type this every single time I wanted to use that special spell? It would be ridiculous. Um, another little, another little thing, I guess you could say, because that's more of an advanced usage of the common event, so I'm not going to go into that right now. But another little simple use of it will be switch activation. So in my game, I happen to have. Um, a HUD and the heads-up display is activated by a button press so what did I do well I created two common events one to determine the button that you're pressing and the other to toggle the HUD on and off yes you can link multiple common events and have them call each other so in my case the HUD button happens to be F8 so if the player presses F8, this will get called. And as you can tell, it's a parallel process, so it's always running. So long as this switch is turned on. Provided this switch is turned on, I can press the F8 key. It will wait two frames just to avoid spamming usage of the key. And then it will toggle the HUD event, which is right below it. What this event does? It has no trigger, so it can be called at will. And what it does is, it will check to see if the HUD is already off. If it is, it will turn it on, and it will switch the switch to on. If it's off, well, then it will turn the HUD back on. So, that's just an example of how you can call one common event into the other common event. Now, as you can see, common events are pretty useful, especially for larger games. They're not much explained, because not many people realize what you can do with them. So hopefully this tutorial gave you a little insight to uh, the common event interface, and maybe you'll find a good use for them. So until next time, happy game making.